Hey everybody! Wake up! It's noon. <laughs> oh yeah, some of you people are uh, not used to being being awake at this hour. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we're still working on um, still working on that whole opening sequence thing. Um, there's there's a whole hey, lot of stuff here. Wake up! It's oh, noon. Jesus. Okay. Hang on. Yep, 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 yep. And welcome to Game Gallery, <laughs> where we talk about stuff revolving around gaming and certain games that we talk about things and i am solar gray the cinematic sorcerer coming at you with the duggernaut hey how you doing buddy i'm doing all right how you doing uh you know it, it's one of those things <laughs> um oh wait i kind of messed that up there this is all darkness oh okay cool. it's no longer all darkness <laughs> all right yeah oh, so hello. here yeah here we are again this was me talking to the camera so for those of you guys that are like watching, hey, how you doing? Feel free to leave something in the comments because you're going, hey, wait, they're still working their stuff out. I don't get up this early. <laughs> yeah, as, uh, as someone who loves the rare days where he can actually sleep in until 8, uh, you know, the, the idea of being still groggy at noon from just waking up is very foreign to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I got a day job. I, I, I do all this stuff for other people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I can make fun of you that now. Yeah, I can't sleep because of all the crying and the pulling and the what has the kid broken and how is it going to make itself bleed and scream now no, type that, stuff. Today, the, um, uh, my, my daughter decided to wake me up by taking my uh, pants from the floor, climbing up onto the bed, and laying them on top of me. Uh, just like hey hey you oh no and then uh and then she reached over and took my glasses off of the nightstand and like unfolded them and then tr tried to like jam them onto my face i'm like okay okay i get the idea you want me up You're worried. You, what, what do you want are you hungry are you <laughs> yeah no she wanted pancakes so she got pancakes of, of course she wanted yeah. pancakes yeah i mean again it's it's really one of those things where like the kids don't quite understand tired because no. they don't have to stay awake um well, but as we get older hmm? no 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 no. they 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 get i don't want to go to sleep i don't want to go to sleep so i'm not going to go to sleep uh, but they haven't put together that cranky and tired have a direct correlation <laughs> right right that has not uh not even remotely um been connected yet there's just uh i'm having fun i'm having fun why do i hate everything i'm so mad i don't want to sleep i'm just mad and then wake up everything's fine now yeah exactly yeah, that I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what trips me out though it's uh she'll be sleeping like a rock you know like just dead asleep right right uh you know whether it's like sleeping all night or, or whatever it is just dead asleep and then she wakes up and there's i'm used to like okay i wake up groggy bleary eyed okay i gotta like look around figure out where i am no she wakes up and it's like it's goes from zero to 60 it's like okay i'm awake let's go yeah and i, I remember i was once like that at about the same age because your kid's hitting two yeah next month this don't month. we're in july now Later yeah this month. don't worry it's gonna go away because <laughs> when it went away with me i'll tell you I've never been able to recover it. I wake up and I'm just like, yeah, let's go. And, uh, let's no. go. Yeah, let's go back to sleep. I'm just I'm just going to lay here. Just Yep. I got to be at work at 8. Uh it's now 6, so I'm going to lay here till at least 6:45. That yep. you know, 6:45 is good. So, I promise it won't last forever. <laughs> yeah, everybody tells me that uh you know, things are going to be real good. It'll just feel like forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that much I already can, uh, can agree to. But everybody says that, uh, you know, when, when they're four, for ages about four to 12, it's going to be real great. Just just great, you know? They're smart. They're, they're able to handle their own stuff. Everything's great. So until four, it's going to be bad. And uh, after <laughs> 12, uh, well, she's a girl. 
So, you know. Yeah, which means you are going to be going through the father thing. And yeah. I, I despise gender roles. I oh, really yeah. and truly do. But that whole idea of if you have a boy, you have to worry about him. But if you have a girl, you have to worry about every boy. Yeah. Um, hopefully, by the time your daughter hits high school, that will have lessened. Hopefully, by the time your grandchildren will hit high school, that will no longer be a thing. Um, but as long as it is, yeah. <laughs> as long as it is, it, it, it's, it's real. So, um, yeah, I, um, I have been reeling myself. Yeah. I've been reeling. Well, this is a week. Okay, this is technically my Monday, mm. and because of the success of last week, not necessarily in viewership, bring a friend, huh? Um, but in just depth of transmission, I live casted four or five days last week. You know, um, yeah, I had Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We have a comment that my mic is not on. Oh, your mic isn't on. Well, your mic should be on. Okay. Um, Speak. I'm, I'm speaking. Are we, are we getting... Go ahead, keep on. I'm keep talking, uh, talking, talking, talking. Oh, your mic is most definitely on. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so... Wait, what, what, what chat are you, are you in? Oh, my friend messaged me. Hey, Kieran, hey, Kieran just showed up. Poofed. Well, <laughs> have them leave the comments in the, in the regular YouTube chat. All right, anybody who's, uh, who's watching right now, leave your comments in the YouTube live chat. I am monitoring it, so yeah. I will see your comments. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, so, yeah, between Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday last week, I'm just like, oh, hey, so this busy. is my life now. You this is my busy life now. Live streaming schedule, which I have to, uh, you know, you, you're cheating on me with a hobby podcast, <laughs> now, and I've got some words, man. Uh, you know, you're, you're you're going, you know, you're you, you know, I love the hobby <laughs> side of this, and here I am stuck on the game gallery. Well, you're cheating on me with some fine bearded young man. <laughs> Talking about hobby stuff while well, I have to sit there and watch it through a screen and comment in the YouTube chat and like and subscribe. How <laughs> dare. Uh, come on, baby. You know you were my first. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you say you know. that to all of your uh, co-hosts. No, just most of them. But um, <laughs> no, seriously, it was. Oh, man. Sorry about that bump. But no, seriously, it was. All right. Let me tell you how that came about. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, let, let me explain. Let me explain, honey. Uh -huh. Let me explain. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I got some yeah. explaining. As as you know, Thursday is normally the day for table talk, and that's when DW comes over and we live stream at like god awful a.m. Um, yeah. Okay, we start at eleven. Same, you know, we pretty much do the same type of cast that we do today. Um, but this is this is um a big difference. Um. Everything was cool, but you know, he is a working voice actor. Right. Okay. And so Monday, we good for Thursday. I got a topic. Um, yeah, we're good so far. Cool. Um, Wednesday morning. So we good for tomorrow. I got a topic. And he's like, yeah, so far we're good. I'll be there at the normal time. Wednesday night, 8 p.m. So we're really good for tomorrow. Ooh, I just got called into set tomorrow. Yeah, so it really came down to literally. The I'm like, um, um, damn it, damn it. Do I not broadcast on Thursday, or do I give the audience something? Well, I have been kicking around that hobby thing, um, the hobby aspect and stuff. But who can be at my house at 11 a.m. <laughs> on Thursday morning? Right. Looking through, looking through the people, looking through the people, looking through the. <gasps> it's summer vacation. Yeah. Hey, Dave. <laughs> How you doing, bud? You doing good? How's the wife? Yeah. You want a soda? <laughs> you know? Um, can I please have your help? <laughs> can you please show up last minute tomorrow? Yeah, and that and that's exactly it. Well, that, you had a good show. You, you know, I, I gotta give uh, give credit where it's due. I really uh, I enjoyed watching um, watching that show, and uh, you guys talked about some good stuff. And I look forward to future uh, hobby episodes. And uh, if you ever, <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna put it out there. If you ever want to do a combined game gallery hobby hangout uh, uh, you know, live show, I would be happy 
to have uh, not even good at stuff in uh, with me and, and do a combined show. I'm sure you would. <laughs> it's just a matter of there's being happy to help well, and being capable mm, to help with the full-time job, yeah. the two-year-old, the traffic, and the fact that you need to be home and asleep by 11. Uh, usually, yeah. So, Again, you know. That, that waking up uh, at 6 in the morning has, uh, has that effect. Thank you. So, yeah. you know, don't think that you weren't one of my first calls <laughs> or one of my first thoughts, but you know... I can't pay you as much as you're making at your day job. That's true. Uh, and 11 a.m. on a Thursday is definitely some pretty prime day job time. <laughs> Though, to be fair, I'm usually thinking about hobby stuff <laughs> uh, at, at my day job. So, you know, I've, I've got that going for me. Yeah, that is a thing. That is truly a thing. Uh, let's see. Checking the check in the chat here. You know, people are talking to you. Oh, what? What? You guys have a problem with my show? Yeah, no, just, yeah. just. Well, uh, uh, our good friend Rick Hardslab here uh, is. Uh... Yeah, yeah, that that's a name. <laughs> that's a uh, name. That's that's. Uh, I mean, buddy. we've been he's been using that name uh, as his as his online handle uh, for probably over ten years at this point. Uh, and hey, you we, know, we've always gotten a kick out of it because it's it's almost a porn name, but not quite. It's not almost a porn name. Uh huh. It, it's there by about no, ten yards. No, it's, it's really not. Yeah, like, yeah, it really is. What you think it wouldn't be one if he used the other abbreviation for Richard? No, nah, that would be more of a porn name. Yeah, right? exactly. But that does not mean that Rick Hartslab is not the name of an adult film person or the name an adult film actor would take. Fair enough. You know. Well, it's definitely funny to see him flying around a spaceship with that over the top of the ship. You know, as his uh, as his handle. Okay, well, yeah. I guess, you know, um, good to meet you out there, Rick. And I look forward to your instructional manual of how to make love at a woman. So, <laughs> um, but with that, um, we've got, what was it? Uh, camel, camel care, camel. Uh, yeah, the camel care, camel lover, camel. <laughs> camo heart. Oh, camo, as in camouflaged heart. Yes, camouflaged um, heart. Hope you out there watching, darling. This episode is for you um, because there was a question that was posed and um, we normally spend a little bit longer. Oh, wait, I got to do the thing because we're live casting on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. And since the new YouTube <laughs> thing is begging for likes and subscribes and hitting the freaking notification button with the subscribe, they always do that in like the first mm -hmm. 30 seconds of videos now yeah. instead of at the end. So now since I got y'all here, I have to say if you like the show, help the channel grow and subscribe, bring friends, you know, do the sharing, leave comments. Um, we pick people every week that leave comments after this posts. Mm -hmm. Um, to get um, key change, which puts them in the drawing for some other cool back in the deck merch. Yeah, who has um, keychains too? Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, wait, look at you. Look at you. He's ah, like, yeah, nice key. Off. Oh, yeah. look at that. Look at that. Yep. Yeah, durable too. I uh, I had one on my, my key ring for quite a while. Eventually, uh, it, it was one of the early prototypes and it mm -hmm. still lasted for, I don't know, quite a while before it ended up breaking down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they've been improved significantly since then. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God, have they? Um, but yeah, so, you know, um, and just to let you guys know that we do answer questions and we yes. do read the comments. Today's show is going to be answering a serious game question yeah. that was posed um, to the Duggernaut between last week's show and this week's show. And um, God, when did I get um, my my radio show voice happening here today? I, I'm we're going to yeah. talk about how gamers smell different from everybody else and oh, uh you know that, yeah yeah no um <laughs> but yeah um a question was posed and for those of you guys new we are back in the deck productions and everything we talk about we talk about from the perspective of or answering the perspective of people of color lgbt women um the disabled and and i i need to put this on the head of the website the rural poor yeah. Because people of color and the rural poor, we got way more in common oh, yeah. than you guys might think. The trailer park is right next to the projects, man. Yep. Um, so with that, um, there was a question that was posed about, you know, being a person of color in games. And 
Um, and the question that was posed, we'll get to in a bit. But one of the things I want to do, since we've got new people here, and it's like, well, if you've got all those things, be, 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 why is it that your co-host is a middle-class white guy? So I'm going to let Doug actually explain what a little bit about what his journey and learning what we do from me as personal experience has been over the past few years. Well, uh, let's see, where do you even start on that? Um, as a middle-class white guy uh, who grew up in the suburbs of Long Beach, California, um, I didn't have a lot of exposure to a lot of other cultures. Uh, I didn't have... Um, <coughs> No, oh, you you laugh, but I mean it's, it's. Oh no, I'm laughing at the fact that my head just totally ended up in your shot. Oh well, yeah, new new camera angles will uh, sometimes do that. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have a lot of exposure to other cultures, other anything, and it wasn't for any sort of malicious lack of you know trying to to shield me from um, you know from the world or anything. It was just that's kind of how suburban white culture is is, is just the. You know that that lack of um, anything else. Yeah, of anything else, yeah. So um, I ended up uh, I ended up meeting Solar. God, what? Probably eight years ago, thereabouts. They're not that long. No, it was I more like six. Yeah, five or six. Well, no, I would say four. It was about four years. Well, whatever it was. Um, I'll look at the archive footage. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that, that we talked about and bonded over was the idea of, um, you know, my experiences in gaming and how through no, really through no fault of my own, I just hadn't been exposed to other ways of looking at game stuff than being a white dude, you know, being a middle class white dude and everything is made for middle class white dudes. A competitive Every middle aged white dude. Yeah. That, that's an yeah. important part. Um. Well, we, we've talked about the competitive stuff before, mm -hmm. but um, uh, specifically the idea that, like, I had never taken a minute to examine the fact that everything Tolkien produced, everything that, um, well, just any media that is being pulled from to make games, to make uh, any sort of miniature stuff, supplements, anything like that, is all defaulting to the idea that a middle-class white male is the target audience and so everything is being made with me in mind and i never noticed because of course i'm the target audience i everything <clears throat> looked great everything was just fine and so i never spent any amount of time thinking about what that meant or what it was like for people who didn't have stories that were written with me as the main character mm -hmm. or you know a, a me analog um and, you know, for me, every Luke Skywalker and Harry Potter I saw was just like, oh, yeah, sure, that's normal. That's that's my story on the screen. I can relate to that. That's just fine. Um, and I just never really made the connection that there was so much that wasn't being presented because I had just never thought about it. And that was one of the things that you and I have talked considerably about over oh, the yeah. years. Uh, it's just the idea of what that looks like from the other side and what it feels like from the other side and ways to try and lessen that effect. Mm -hmm. um, which I try to do. I still stumble many times, but... Hey, we all do. Truth yeah. be told, um, being a person of color, I am a person of color. So I see this stuff through the lens. Like when we talk about post-apocalypse stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that. yeah. You, um, my, my stance on post-apocalypse, I don't enjoy it because my childhood was spent scavenging for resources and running away from raiders. We called them gangsters, but they did the same thing. So that's not escapism from my point of view. However, I don't know what a woman's point of view is with a lot of this fiction, but I have noticed that there's fridging or rape as a character device. Yeah. And, or as a character motivation for someone other than the victim. Can you, can you describe what uh, fridging is? Uh, fridging. Fridging is a term. You guys can Google it. But in short, fridging started with the Green Lantern written by, um, oh, I forgot his name. And I should because uh, Judd Winnick. Green Lantern written by Judd Winnick in the mid-90s where the main character's girlfriend was killed by someone who wanted to be his nemesis. And her body was stuffed into a refrigerator. And that was his motivation to continue to really hero up. You know, okay. but the only thing about his girlfriend's character was that she'd only been in the comic for like four or five issues. Mm. So her favorite color wasn't even written into her character. She was specifically there 
to be the love interest that gets killed. Now, how does that make the girl readers of Green Lantern feel? You know, what does it say their point is? And I never considered it. So in literally being the guy that's going, hey, consider the point of view from black people. I have to consider the point of view from women, from LGBT, since I am a cis het black male. Yeah. Um, and from the from the disabled point of view, like I, I had an interesting discussion with someone over cyborg. Ah, ah, overexposure. Yeah, I had an interesting that's better. Um, an interesting conversation. I hit a keyboard thing. Don't worry gotcha. about it. Um, had an interesting conversation with someone over cyborg. I hated the idea that you finally get a black comic book character and he's disabled. Because you get a black comic book character, they're either disabled or a criminal or wrongfully convicted, but they are a convict. You, you, you right. see what I mean? But, I like um, yeah. However, I didn't consider it from the standpoint of someone with disabilities mm. because Cyborg is an amputee mm. who then uses his prosthetics to merge with every computer system on the planet to end up being one of the most powerful people out there. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. All right, all right. So he, he's definitely a disabled hero who happens to be black, um, you know. But again, these are all things that we have to consider now that communication is instantaneous and so easy. Yeah. So easy. Yeah, and that's... Like I say, I, a large part of my journey has been just learning what I don't know. <laughs> um, and and uh, you know, like I was, uh, you know, like I was saying, you and I have talked considerably, and a lot of that talk has just been me going like, "Huh, I literally was <laughs> unaware that I didn't know so much." And you know, uh, knowledge is power, and just knowing that you don't know a thing is the power to start learning about the thing. Well, there's also the acceptance of that not knowing, and that's where we are yes. right now as yes. a society. But, um, so, um, enough of the deep stuff, okay? <laughs> enough of the deep stuff, because, yeah. you know, I don't know that people tune in to actually watch us wax philosophical, but... That's what they're getting, but I really don't want to turn this into the "you're gonna take your medicine" show. <laughs> um, why do people keep freaking messaging me? It's like, yeah, right. you know what? Well, my um, my friend Camo Hart, um, she she posed the question um, that I then relayed to you, mm -hmm. and then and uh, I'm glad you did. Yes, and uh, uh, you know, I was I just mentioned it offhanded. I didn't realize it was going to be the topic for today's show, um, <laughs> but I, I uh, she asked me why. You know, in, in a game such as a role-playing game where you can create any character you want, oh, well, it, why does why is representation for a person of color, why does it matter? Because you just make a character that is a person of color, and now there you go. And you have it in the game, you created it. Why does not having that representation from the game company matter? You know, why is that such a big deal, and why is um, you know, fighting for more representation uh, so important? And uh, yeah, I posed that question to you, and, and uh, we talked about it a little bit. And then uh, a couple of days later, you came back like, oh, man, I've been thinking about this. <laughs> I wrote an essay on this. We're going to have a show about it. I was like, okay, well, I, I thought it was a good conversation topic. I didn't realize it was a show topic. Oh, yeah. Talking. And, of course, you replied with the perfect reply, which is, that's nice. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, going to well, sleep now. Because again, our, our schedules are a little bit different here. Uh, so when you message me the night before, when I'm trying to get to bed early so that I'm awake to do your show <laughs> in the morning. Uh, our show. Uh, so that when we do our show in the morning, I'm not sitting here with my coffee. Going, rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> um, you know, it, yes, I'm going to say that like, okay, well, that certainly is a topic. And um We'll talk about it tomorrow because sleep is more important than me trying to process this on dead brain in the night. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's actually, that's not just actually fair. That is damn fair because if I was on my way to bed and you hit me up like that, I'd be like, okay, man, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That That's real nice. Yep. And we will talk about it tomorrow when the time comes. Yep. I'll make sure to show up early <laughs> so that we can discuss this and go over the format. But in order to do that, I'm going to bed. Good night. Yep. Sweet. Uh, good night. If so long. Farewell. <laughs> I'll be there. Goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. um. But yeah. So today we are covering 
um, why not just make a person of color? Doesn't that, cons- you know, yeah, can't you a- make again. your own inclusivity? And it's it's a complex answer. Um, if you guys were to look on Deckers of, on the book on the Facebook, um, you guys will be able to see that today's topic is creating a person of color and why that don't count (laughs) um because it's not an individual thing um but there's so many things so many things um i i want to start off with a story um i play a home a homebrew game from um juan punto nunez (laughs) and um his homebrew game is actually pretty deep he and another friend of ours has been working through it for decades decades and decades and decades um okay just two decades but still still there's still decades and decades yeah oh no it is decades because it doesn't become the s you don't get the s until you're at least two so um unlike decades of decades because i don't want to live to be that old um what is that 40 at that 40 years at that point four decades decades of decades oh no okay i see decades of decades yes um but the truth is um, I created a character of color who was an ambassador and he was a prince and all that stuff. And the moment I landed on the European analog, I was arrested as a criminal and thrown in jail with all my stuff taken away and no communication to my homeland. Uh huh. Like, Which was this a planned thing that you were like, oh yeah, this is part of how this character is gonna, or is this just like, no, he decided this is how it works in his world? Um, when I came to him with the character concept, mm. he had already decided that's how it worked in his world, but he only communicates in subtext. Uh. So he said, are you sure you want to do that? Oh, geez. All right. And I said, yeah, I mean, it's a great concept character and all that stuff. And he's like, all right. I mean, if that's what you're sure. And so he didn't tell you this is how his world worked. He didn't tell, because this is, this is a setting he has created. He could make this setting whatever he wanted. And he decided in this setting, this is how it worked and did not inform you of this ahead of time. Exactly. Now here's the gig. It was a world that he and another friend of ours created. And he by trade is an anthropologist. So he doesn't quite understand that people don't automatically have the same cultural understandings as he does because I went to school for things other than anthrop- anthropology. Um, and the anthropologist does not understand that other people don't have the same perspective as him. You're a historian. Yeah, yeah. How often do I have to remind you that not everyone looks at the nuances of things that happened in the past? Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. just like people look at me and go, dude, people don't see the same things in film that you do. It's true. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I went to school for this. I'm trained for this. You know, same with science. I'm like, wait, that wouldn't be scientifically accurate. But ah, <laughs> screw it. It's a comic book. You know. Yeah. Leave that conversation for uh, for Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter. He'll, yeah, he'll, right? He'll, he'll, uh, he'll tear apart any sort of uh, scientific flaws in movies just fine. And then he'll make it a point that, dude, it's just a movie. Yeah. And that is why he is so awesome. Oh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, but what it really came down to was, um, you know, all the things that happened granted it was a homebrew world sure and i used part of the homebrew world that he created but i had no access to learning of the sociological economic all that other stuff um none of the consequences that came down from that so though i was there as you know a guest of the nobility um the bureaucracy didn't go all the way down to the city guards so when what someone the bureau- like in terms of he had not uh, the city guards. Anything. Yeah, he didn't write down that the city guards were aware that my caravan was coming in. So when bandits came, oh, everybody got arrested and everybody went to jail. Okay. Yeah, you see what I mean? And um, I was supposed to have diplomatic immunity, but the guards hadn't known about they didn't even know diplomatic immunity was a thing because it okay. didn't go that far down the totem pole. So here I am as the black dude in this European game setting playing a black dude. And in my first five minutes, I ended up robbed in jail. (laughs) Yeah, that's, um, 
like just from a game perspective to me that that rubs me the wrong way because you know you and i have talked about previously the the idea um that game expectations are such an important part of the you know enjoyment of the game for all parties involved and that just seems like a violation of that rule one. Oh well to his credit okay he did say that this was going to be a hardcore game Okay. And when he says, now, well, I didn't quite get what hardcore meant. This was how I learned his definition of hardcore. And and the fact and, that he speaks in subtext. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> I only re learned that recently because ah. this game I'm talking about happened like eight years ago. Um, but um, I wrote out a, pe a person of color. But in doing that, I had to think out a whole lot of things in relation to the story. Okay. And then I realized, wait a minute. This is probably why a lot of people um, that role play or why a lot of people of color don't role play. There is no us. Yeah. Um, I've mentioned before. Um, and yeah, guys, it's hot in here. I've mentioned before how I didn't like 7th C because in right. a game about piracy, there's no African continent analog. Yeah, not just that, but there's no like, again, the historian side have to see things through the history perspective. You know, piracy is completely, uh, you know, part of the economic system that involved a very robust slave trade. Yes. And, like, whether or not there's even an Africa, if there's not even a slave trade, analog, <laughs> like, what is your setting even? Well, I there mean, is a slave trade analog that's in it in some oh. of the supp supplement books. And I'm like, oh, so essentially we fall out of the ether and all that stuff. But, yeah. but mean, to um, cover that whole... <clears throat> why not just make a person of color? I have to say that making a person of color is a lot more involved than um, simply making your human character with brown skin. Right. You know, which is a lot of the approach. Um, to you know, to their credit, uh, Wizards of the Coast and other you know Paizo, other um, companies have started producing a lot more art with their characters of whatever class whatever else with various skin tones yeah um you know everywhere from you know dark to pale and everything in between um what they haven't do is or have not done i should say <clears throat> is exactly what you're describing right now uh which is that idea of creating a reason why they have different skin tones <laughs> and what that even means yeah you know, why People don't just develop dark skin living in European climates. That's right. It's not really a thing. Yeah, exactly. So um, I wrote down a whole bunch of different stuff. And what I realized is that we're going to kind of just throw a Reader's Digest version of defining what person of color is. Ah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the number, it comes down to um, three things. And this is huge because... If a person is just going to create a color of a person of color character, the reason that it's difficult is because when they write that character, they have to take three things in mind. The culture of that person, um, the geography of that person's history, mm -hmm. and the relativity of both of those things in relation to the other PCs. Yes. That is huge. Okay, and what do I mean by culture? Well, um, let's take child discipline as the current analog. Sure. It's fine to hit your kids in Africa. Nobody look, Nobody has a second look. Same in the Caribbean. Same in my neighborhood. Your kid's doing something wrong, you slap the hell out of them. That don't fly well in your neighborhood. <laughs> it's true. Uh, you know, maybe traditionally more so, but especially, you know, in the last 20 years or so, uh, even spanking kids has become like, oh no, you don't do that. Yeah, exactly. You know, so my, my grandparents, uh, you know, my grandparents smacked the hell out of my parents. <laughs> my parents spanked my sister and I, and now we can't even do that. Or people go, oh my goodness, you're, you're, you're physically assaulting that child. But right, and um, so how do these cultural traditions, like one, what are the characters' cultural traditions? Like, you have to have at least four, you know, and you have to have at least four to make a vivid character. Um, and as far as geography, where's this person's family from? Right. How did they get here? Did Asians spontaneously erupt <laughs> in freaking Waterdeep? Right. Is that a thing? You know, um, if you're playing, if you're playing any kind of fantasy game, like, 
you know, where do the people come from? Because the default is medieval Europe. Yeah. And then you have the Morgan Freeman and the Robin Hood movie from the 90s problem. Yep. Um, but even then, they made it very clear, like, they were at war with the Moorish. I yep. mean, it was the Crusades. Um, yeah, which, it, to its credit, um, any sort of, of medieval movie usually at least correctly identifies where you would find darker-skinned people and why they would be interacting with pale-skinned Europeans. Like you say, okay, well, uh, the Moors, a common... Uh, enemy and pe pers or a common enemy that Europeans were fighting uh, depending on the time period and probably the only dark-skinned Africans that Europeans would have any contact with at the time. Cool. Likewise, okay, you know, we want to have some, uh, some Middle Eastern people. We got the Crusades. Cool. Something happened on the Crusades. Those people came back to Europe for one reason or another. We can now have this character in our you know in our movie show whatever and explain it away that way right but and, mm -hmm. again talking about the geography and games when you don't have a moorish civilization that you can interact with with a geographic reason why they would be there and their history and their culture and everything else where did the dark-skinned people come from in your european analog mm -hmm. and here's the second bit okay um Using D and D only as as um, an example, um, you have your alignment system. Mm -hmm. You know you've got your spectrum of lawful to chaotic, good to evil. Mm -hmm. Well, is lawful good the same in places where the laws are different? Yeah. You know, um, you take the sub-Saharan African um, type mindset. And you're, let's say you're trying to establish trade to say, well, if I play this country, my character is evil in this lawful good mm -hmm. campaign that automatically through no fault of your own makes you a default, makes you a default villain. It makes you an outsider. And, you know, when it comes to just making a person of color in making a person of color, I, I, I think back to D&D. And most of their places that have a non-European bent takes the very historical mindset of anyone that's not European, the way that we say is European, is by default barbaric. Oh, and that's yes. where we get the shaman classes, yep. the shaman magic, because you can't be a cleric because cleric is our thing. You can't be a wizard. You have to be like a, a wild magician. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> or monks, yeah. which is now a common class, mm -hmm. but you know, a monk is a pretty non European Well, concept. the monks that D, &D uses, because yes, there's yeah. a difference between Franciscan, Dominican, yes. and Shaolin. Yes, <laughs> and, and the idea that, like, okay, you know, there are monks in Europe, but they are not kung fu monks. No, you know? and the idea <laughs> no. That, that a monk is a combat idea, you know, because a monk, a European monk, is just a cleric, right. But you have, you know, okay, well, we're going to create something different. We can't have, you know, this, uh, you know, this this race have their own clerics because they, well, they're monks. Mm -hmm. they're something different. Like, well, why does there have to be such a distinction there? Exactly. That that's exactly the thing. But there is a distinction within the rules, and right. um, what it comes down to is when the when a player wants to write a person of color for most games. They have to answer all those questions. Mm -hmm. And as a role player, they have to be able to answer those questions for the players that ask them. Right. Which, me, which adds up at the very end of the day to, I want to play a person of color, but I have to write a supplement book, if not, um, if not an entire new world. Mm -hmm. And... Not having the option of going to the store and picking up a book, but having to write it and essentially self-publish as far as my game group is concerned so that they can read up on it and see like what, you know, so that they can flush out how their characters interact with the person based on their character histories. Like, um, do the people of Kryn believe that the Moorish analog are human beings? Right. You know, um, I mean, that that's that's a real question to ask. Right. Um, do they believe they are equal human beings? That yeah. They do. Yeah. I mean, do that's... They, again, using the history analog, um, 
there wasn't a lot of you know in in medieval European um, civilization there wasn't a lot of thinking that the Moors weren't human, but they were certainly infidels. They were certainly um, not of the same quality as God fearing Christendom. And, you know, whatever else the English may think of the French or whatever else, at least we can all agree that we hate the Moors because, well, they're different. And, uh, you know, there's... Uh, move the mic a little closer to your face. A little closer to my face? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Leaned back a little bit. I think that was part of the problem. Yeah, that might be it. Um, but, yeah, the, the idea there that the... Historically, even if... You know, the, it's not yes or no, like are these people even human? There's so many shades of gray that you need to be considering because it's it's not just, well, tell me about the culture of the Moors and write that down. Tell me about how that interacts with every other culture they've ever come in contact with for the last 2,000 years and how that has influenced <laughs> other people's views of them, their trade relations, their, you know, yeah, just I mean, all of that. That is a yeah. really, really big thing. So when it comes down to it, um, it's a great exercise. It's a great exercise oh, yeah. to write 500 pages on this. Um, I mean, I'm, if I'm, that's I'm your bag, yeah. <laughs> if that's your bag, that's your bag. But again, this is a real thing to where being a person of color, wanting to get into role playing. If there isn't already that, then what option do I have? How can I feel as though I can play what I want? Right. Because <clears throat> the things that I want are based on how I see the world. And as not the target demographic, why should I bother? Right. You know, why should I bother playing the white guy or what normally happens? And this is yet another gaming experience. Um, I like the cleric class. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I am a wizard, so casting magic, that's not exactly role playing. But I like <laughs> the cleric class. But whenever I play a cleric, honestly, with whenever I role play with a bunch of white people, the only characters they'll accept and interact with from me have to be Southern Baptist. Like in terms of how you role play them? Yes. I mean, if I play a cleric, then I got to be a preacher and I got to talk like this. And then we call on Hieronymus. And honestly, I really don't like having to coon or having to do the menstrual show thing, and by the way, this is what it looks like when a blood vessel when a blood vessel bursts. <laughs> I'm letting you guys know that 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 right there. That's uh, that's what it looks like. I that's just... a bursted blood vessel. Um, <sighs> but yeah, so um, when it comes down to it, it's a cultural thing. But the crossover happens just like we talked about last week. There's only so much role playing that you can do where you don't insert a bit of yourself into it. Sure. And that lack of the lack of not under the lack of understanding of people of color in the regular world tends to bleed over to the lack of understanding of people of color in the fantasy world yeah. because the player is still dealing with whatever they know. So with not having any readily available subsequent material for them to look stuff up, not saying there isn't in libraries, of course, sure, we can sure. we can always look up the history of black culture. But in in context of there's no there is not a whole lot of um hell, give me a role playing game besides Dungeons and Dragons. Um World of Darkness. Yeah, um well, World of Darkness, that's a little different because that's set in modern times. Okay, so another fantasy game. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, Ars Magica. Oh, you know, okay. there's there yeah, go. there's really no no African analog supplement materials for Ars Magica because you're playing a European wizard. Right. Right? So, you know, what are the African spells? What are mm -hmm. the you know, what are some of the rituals that anybody could do if they were properly trained? And Honestly, most of the time, the major crossover point in that would be the spell books. Mm -hmm. that, that is one of the solutions that I found. But again, a GM and a player sitting down writing spell books that are based on the Caribbean. Right. You know? And one of the, well, two things I wanted to say. The first one's shorter ones. We'll start there. Um, we, you know, you mentioned how uh, the players can struggle with uh, you know, only being able to role play what they know. From my perspective, 
yeah, I'm a middle class white dude. I, out of respect for anyone else, I don't play female characters. Mm-hmm. I don't play people of color because I know I cannot role play that with <laughs> any degree of respect. <laughs> like I just can't. Um, you know, I, I. It makes me feel bad that you know somehow I'm not being more inclusive in my role playing of stuff, mm-hmm. but. I wouldn't be able to give any sort of respectable, um, you know, respectable depiction. Game, yeah, dimension. There we go. Thank you to one of these characters. So I don't. Um, but that being said, uh, on the other subject of the spells, um, yeah. a lot of what I've seen is the idea that the spells in the D and D spellbook or whatever spellbook we're talking about, mm-hmm. um, the magic is the same. The name of the spell might be different from culture to culture mm-hmm. uh, or even wizard to wizard. Um, they actually bring this up in Frostgrave where okay. they're like, you know, you've got X number of spells here. Um, I think it's 80 spells in the core book or something like that. And they say, like, look, here are the the names that we are giving these spells. But every school of magic, every individual wizard, because they're so secretive, and a lot of times they've (laughs) they've had to reinvent the wheel so many times to develop all of this magic, they give it different names. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether it's because they literally don't know that something else exists, or they're like, well, I just spent the last 20 years developing this telekinesis spell, so I'm going to call it Doug's telekinesis spell, because you know what? I did it. Um, and one of the other great examples I can think of off the top of my head is the Penny Arcade group has a regular role-playing session with one of their characters, Jim Dark Magic, who is a very conceited, <laughs> a very conceited well, he's, he's Jim Dark Magic from the New Hampshire Dark Magic. Um, yes, my name is Dark Magic. This is my sister, Terry McEvil, yep. and yep. my cousin, um, what was it? Um, Orphan Crippler. Yep. Yeah. So that's yep. that's. So he's yeah. he's Jim Dark Magic of the New Hampshire Dark Magics, and uh, he has um, he's a very conceited sorcerer, and he has named he's trademarked all of his spells. So he's got Jim's Magic Missile, and he's got you know, <laughs> whatever else it is, and so he's he's trademarked and renamed all of his spells. Um, so the idea. You could lean into an idea that the magic itself, the actual spell effect, doesn't change from culture to culture but maybe the context of it does the way they summon that spell the the way the ritual looks the name of the spell the you know the magic itself may be similar but a fireball may be a fireball no matter who you know what culture is casting as fair don yeah as fair don so i could see that going that way as well though I would prefer to see some cool, unique magic that come. You know, we, we mentioned in a, a show a while ago about the, you know, you were talking about how um, you could have a spider god uh, and a whole culture around a religion for this deity that literally has no analog mm-hmm. in a regular D&D setting. Right. I would love to see the cleric of the spider god's magic. I would love to see, <laughs> you know, and, and, and not just reskinning existing spells. Yeah. I would love to see some unique spider god magic. Like, give me that. Give me that. I, I need that content. Right. And yeah. honestly, um, now to say um, to say that all things are bleak. Um, again, it, it's not the whole thing. But there's a lot of there are a lot of questions that have to be answered when it comes to putting people of color in established game settings. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what would the standard economic class be? Yeah. You know, do they have? Um, do they have access to the same opportunities that someone else would have? Of course, the answer is probably no, but why? Right. Is it because of cultural identity? Is it because of nationalism? Mm. Is it because of the racial scar that goes through the United States? Did it go through there? And if so, what are those stories? Yeah. These are all things that a role player would have to answer in making a person of color. Um, and again, this is what representation really means. It's not just, hey, that person has dark skin, and other than the dark skin, they're just like everybody else. The answer is they're not. Right. They have a different cultural history, different traditions. Um, one of the things I put in my in my notes, like, you know, as far as the culture thing goes, is would the would the character of color like the food? Mm-hmm. that the players have access to. Unlikely. And I'm talking about you, Karen, with your bland-ass potato salad. It's true. You know? Um, and would the PCs like the food of... Like the like the food that the other people prepare. I mean, these is are. It, is it spicier than mayonnaise? Because if so, I, I don't know. These uh, these European characters. Tell are. that to the Chinese. Oh, okay. You know? I mean, that that's... You know, I yeah. mean... 
if you have a character, and again, when I say people of color, yeah. I know I'm black, so you automatically think black. But what if um, uh, um, one of the, like I said, one of the things um, that got me on this outside of the story of Juan Punto um, was I had some friends that were in Hindu by birth. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to play D&D, but they wanted to write a campaign that went through Hindu mythology. And for 3.5, there was no analog. Right. So we had to create epic level characters that represented the gods of Hinduism, you mm. know, and then had to had to write an analog for the cultural traditions and the history of India India. Yeah. The physicist says to the historian. Yeah. The oldest culture in recorded history. You're, you're not. You're not going to get any sort of like uh, uh, me telling you this is not something that you know should exist already. Oh no. I'm. I'm just. Yeah. I'm trying to illustrate how much work that was. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, well, and and again, as the historian, um, Europe, you can't have European history without having some way to tie in the cultures that Europeans interacted with. And India, I mean, not to put it too mildly, but there's a reason Columbus sailed across <laughs> the Atlantic, and it was to find India. <laughs> like, he was literally so desperate to find a shorter, more economically viable way to connect his country with theirs that he discovered an entire new world! <laughs> like... Well, you know, discovered, obviously, we can you know, go into that. But the idea is, like, India was an integral part of European history. Right. It, like, as a trade partner, as a cultural influence, um, I mean, Arabic culture would not have been what it was without its interactions with India. Arabic, uh, European culture wouldn't have been what it was without its interactions with Arabic culture. You know, it just, yeah. like, they're all tied together. So when you have a Tolkien-esque setting that just blithely ignores that or at best has them be the villainous barbarians coming in from the east and south right and then as a person from those traditions when you're friends yep. your very well-meaning cis het white male friends um say hey why don't you play this game with us these are some of the reasons that it's not an absolute yeah that sounds fun 15 minutes in a character creation yeah because the things that are important to our culture aren't exactly put out there, be it Hindu culture, yeah. um, a lot of the Asian cultures. Now, the Asian culture thing, that's, that's a weird animal. Um, if you look back, um, head down to backinthedeck.com and look up the Fluff Talk stuff, um, we did two. We did two of the games that revolved around Asian culture mm -hmm. being the second edition D&D um the second edition D, &D supplement um car tour right because we did or cara tour k-a-r-a -A space t-u-r and um and we did legends of five rings mm. okay we didn't do oriental adventures but we did those two because what we had again was much like a black exploitation movie which was Middle class white people writing the history of Asianic cultures without very many advisors or editors or yeah. other Asian writers. So it's, I have a base understanding of what I think this culture is like, so I'm going to write it down. But there are things that go with every single culture that is very difficult to see if you don't know what to look for. You know, um, and I want to I want to turn this over, not 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 turn the show over. But, yeah, um, we're going to push this over into um, represent, you know, since we're talking about representation, um, the whole idea of the female thing. Like when we look at D&D &D or um, Inamine or Legend of Five Rings or all that stuff, playing a female character comes with two layers of difficult representation. Yep. The representation of how are women depicted in the narrative and how do the players interpret yep. that depiction? Yep. You know, um, 
And for those of you older role players out there, you already know, yeah, we're talking about chainmail bikinis. I was just about you to know, jump into chainmail bikinis. Of course bikinis. we're jumping yeah. in. That, that's, the, that's not just the elephant in the room. That is the herd yeah. in the room. The whole question of the higher the bonus to the female's armor, the less armor there actually is. Yep. You know? It's it's gotten a lot better in um uh in in recent depictions, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um most of the new stuff, again, especially credit where it's due, Wizards of the Coast has been doing a lot to try and um, reverse a lot of the damage that's been done with D&D &D in the past. Well, they've hired a lot more women and a lot more people of color. It's true. Absolutely <laughs> true. Um, but I'm just saying, like, all the new depictions of stuff coming out, uh, all of those women are wearing plate mail. They're wearing, you know, cleric robes. They're wearing, you know, nothing particularly skimpy, sexy, or revealing about it. It's a woman wearing armor. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Um, and what you're, what you're mentioning here is something that's absolutely infected every level of, I would say nerd fandom. I mean, I was reading a thing not too long ago, uh, the, the new, um, Star Wars character played by Gwendolyn Christie, uh, mm -hmm. in the new films, uh, Captain Phasma, yeah, Captain Phasma, wearing very shiny stormtrooper armor. People were complaining that this character didn't look female enough. It was not feminine enough because it was just stormtrooper armor with a woman inside. But stormtrooper uniform, the definition of a uniform. The literal the, the, definition, def yeah. Is one form. <laughs> it is to be so uniform. Yep. Singularly, singular yep. in form that there is no difference between each individual one except for what the uniform conveys, yep. i.e. Captain Phasma being of higher ranking yep. and silver. Yep. And it is a unique set of armor for this unique character. Great. But the idea, like, this was a thing being brought up. Like, hey, we need to talk about the fact that this character is not feminine enough. It's like, no, we don't. It's a woman in armor. Literally, a, a female person wearing armor. That, that's it. That's all we need to talk about. Who particularly is doing a job that does not require femininity? Correct. She is wearing the... She is wearing... The, the clothing, military armor. yeah, she's wearing the clothing and the tools for the job yeah. that she's doing. Gender yep. be damned. Yep. And um, that's that's really a closer step. That's a step in the right direction. I would absolutely, which agree. is the job requires this, so do the job. Correct. Um, the next step is to show what toll that takes on her psychologically. Right. But that has to be written by someone who understands the different tolls that that one particular thing takes on a person based on their culture, their gender, their, you know. Yeah. I mean, that that's a really big thing. Um, well, I, I wanted to hit on the second point you brought up, not just how the, um, the, the company is depicting women in the setting as mm -hmm. that first here, but how the players are as well. Yes. Something I struggle with a great deal as a DM, uh, which is usually the role I find myself in in most role-playing games. I struggle with having, uh, you know, when I'm creating NPCs, uh, the default that I start with is a human male. Right. And then I have to go, okay, no, this is a world where we've got not just human males and not just human females, but also all kinds of other races, <laughs> both genders. Yeah. And so I struggle a lot with that. And um, so kind of the default in any setting with the players, with the DM, whatever, is going to be determined to a certain level by that. You know, are there any women being represented in the NPCs? The, for those of you, that stands for non-player characters. Mm -hmm. Um, the the tavern like owners, shopkeepers, shopkeepers, and, yeah. the the city guards, the whatever else, and it's okay if in your setting or in your story, the city guardsmen are all men. You know, maybe that's a thing in this city. Okay, fine, but not everyone in the city's men. What you think about these sorts of questions? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to gender a specific thing on purpose, why? Exactly. You know. Exactly. And you know, if the city guardsmen are all men, is it okay? Well, maybe. It's maybe it's explicitly a sexist thing. Maybe <laughs> like seriously, I mean that's in in Star Wars that is one of the underlying things. All of the um, all the officers are human males, because, white human males, uh, that, pretty exclusively. Yeah. yeah. Um, Matter of fact, British human well, males. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the 
the in-universe description for that is the Empire itself is a very sexist, human-centric organization. Mm -hmm. And so for them, that is a huge part of their identity as the Galactic Empire is it is a human-dominated, a male-dominated thing. It is very rare to find women or aliens in any positions of power within the Empire. And if you're doing that, make that a part of your setting. Make you know, Write that in as like, look, this is like this despotic authoritarian empire is a sexist xenophobic entity we're writing that into its description so you know what it makes sense that all the officers are human men sure if you had a setting in your DD and that was the case okay i would totally buy that but you got to write that in you have to make that explicitly clear that you didn't just forget to put women in your setting and yeah. not represent them and you also have to make that information available to your players during the time of character creation mm -hmm. because um this is a huge part of the social contract when it comes to gaming like what game are we actually playing you know right. because um again i like playing variety excuse me i don't always play a human you know i've been leaning a lot more toward dwarves lately i, 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 I do like dwarves yeah, they're, they're my, one know. of my favorite fantasy races um but you know i can't say I like elves because I don't like things whose major power is I'm better than you because. Yeah. Um, although I understand why they're better at everything than humans are. And the mm. real answer is because they're older and they stay yep. young longer. Yep. So they have way more time to practice and yep. they don't come out the house until they have a century experience with anything. Yep. So, okay, I, I get it. I just don't like it. Um, but when it comes to the stuff I want to play. One of the hurdles that I've had over the past hundreds of years um, is the player's interpretation of what my person of color means. Mm -hmm. And since there isn't a whole lot of, of information as to, um, what is it? Um, there's not a whole lot of information that says what it's like to be this person from the companies. I mean, yeah, you want to know what dark elves are like, okay, are dark elves analog for black people in D and D? Cause if so, that kind of sucks. Right. Which are, they don't seem to are be. Are dwarves are barbarians. Well, you know, that yeah. that's a big, that's a big question, but most of the games write the other as vilified. It's yeah. they're very nationalistic in their writing. And again, they reflect the times that they're written in. Um, Let's see. Oh, we got yeah, someone we here some saying, um, chat I wanted to get to when you were yeah, done. the need to feminize her uniform is a symptom of the issue because exploitation of her sex is a knife that cuts both ways. So true. I'm guessing this vixen person is <laughs> female. Um, but well, and to address Curran um, directly, he, he posted a little bit up there. We're not going to address Phasma in terms of like how that character didn't do anything in the movies. That's not not in this episode. Not in this episode. Okay, when but we get yes. to when we have a Star Wars day, and yeah. since Doug is on the show, there's going to be a Star Wars there's day. There's already been Star Wars days. There will be more Star Wars days. Yeah, I, I guarantee it. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to that eventually. But yeah, the exploitation of her gender is a knife that does cut both ways because that that is something that a lot of role playing games don't really touch on either. Is yes. that fine line of well, essentially the fine line of having a vagina. Yep. You know, because if, if you're too manly, you're too manly. Yep. But if you're too girly, you're not fun. And it's like, well, what do you do? And all that's, you know, like, yeah. at what point do you stop being female? Do you stop being male? You know, it's gender roles having a huge, having a huge impact on the perception of the characters that are written and played. Yeah. Um, there's a big trend, big trend in RPGs of males playing females yes and then turning them into hussies yep turn them into uh, you know like well uh, i'm playing a female well uh i don't know how to be a female because i'm not a female so uh, let, let me think about what i can play this character as uh well i guess she's just going to seduce all of the men mm -hmm. and um her entire worth in our game is going to be defined by her ability to sleep with uh the villain or whatever <coughs> it is um yeah which i hate that again part of the reason i do not play female characters i don't want to fall into that trap um <laughs> hey you know what at least you are you're conscious enough to see that it is a possibility it, it's absolutely a possibility and it's a possibility that i'm you know I, I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone 
whether you know most of the gaming groups i play with again by definition are male mm -hmm. uh, very rarely has there been females in my role-playing games and more often than not it's predominantly white um it's just as soon as you guys play a game that i that i like i'll show up you know i'm just, well, just saying <laughs> yeah we'll we'll see what we can do uh soon but um yeah the, the idea is i'm trying to not fall into that trap but almost all of the females depicted within the games of any game i played it's like well we've got prostitutes mm -hmm. we've got so-and-so's wife oh yeah um you know it's like well we you know the character we're interacting with is the innkeeper and the innkeeper's wife is delivering food in the background yeah cool sure so there's a female dwarf there fine um there's uh a player character who is a female and may have zero indication whatsoever that that has any difference at all other than the fact that there's an F on the character sheet. Yeah. You know, which you could argue whether that's a good thing or bad thing. I would say, well, it's better than being a whore. <laughs> uh, you know, it's better than like trying to seduce everybody because that's the only way you know how a female could interact with someone else. Mm -hmm. But it's also not very representative of you know, any sort of depth of a character and defining or why you put that F on the character sheet. Right. You know, uh, so it's, it seems like an unnecessary, um, an unnecessary thing to do without a reason, I guess, if you're the role player. No. Um, um I, again, I'm exactly there. Yeah. Um, because, um, oh yeah, forgot to mention that one trope. Wow, that fighter is kicking everyone's, uh, oh, kicking God. everyone's butt, and then they take off the helmet to reveal, oh, it's a woman. Like their gender yeah. determines whether or not, um, they can learn a skill. Yep. You know, I mean that that's yep. just, you know. Yeah, you know, and again, if you're creating a world where women have limited opportunities for skill or for, um economic advancement and that's written into your setting for some reason okay mm -hmm. then sure it would absolutely be impressive for a you know in, in a world where women are not allowed to pick up swords hang on in a world in a world <laughs> in, women. Sorry, sorry, sorry. imagine a world <laughs> <laughs> what would you do uh, if i told you that women can drive neo anyway <laughs> uh but no. if, if it's a setting where the women cannot fight for whatever reason they can't be in the army um they're not allowed to be warriors they have to do something else then a a female character who is a warrior is going to draw some attention mm -hmm. but there's a reason for that there's a set you know you've written that into the setting you are now creating an actual depth to this character and you can write a backstory about why she is bucking tradition to do the thing she's doing and now it's not just an f on a character sheet right and um so one of the big things Oh wait, we've got um do 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 Oh we got a new person in the chat. How you doing, Sherry? Um yeah, we, we talked about that a little earlier. The you have to take into consideration what race you're playing. Yes. Um and yeah, I mean that that's a really big thing. Um all those sexy elves out there. Sexy female elves. Ugh. Yep. Ugh. Ugh. I want I wanna play more sexy female dwarves, you know. Get you some, know get some beard on beard action there. You know, honestly, I just wanna see an obese elf. Yeah. I, I want to see an elf that weighs 450 pounds. I'm going to write one into myself that, now. You know, a magic slinging elf, let's say, yeah. that has spent the past 200 years <laughs> studying and eating. That's all. Yep. No exercise. Locked up in the library. Yeah. And yeah. they just come out like, okay, I'm going to go on the adventure. You know, I'm, yeah, I know it's fine. It's fine. You just turned in, tuned in, darling. I'm glad you're here. Everybody say hi to Sherry as hi, well. Hi, Sherry. Um, but yeah, I mean, seriously, I want to, I want to see those breaks from traditions because, yeah. um, because again, variety is variety and representation is a real thing. Now, there were two examples of books that kind of touched on it. Okay. Uh, one of them is a Pathfinder book. I'm looking up that, but, um, they actually have a character by the old by the man bah, by the name of um, old man Matimbe, mm -hmm. and he is the African magic user dude that lives in another dimension that comes out of that dimension every thousand years to teach three apprentices, and then he goes <laughs> away. He is essentially like the Lady of Pain, as it were. All right, all right. And I'm like, okay, well that's kind of cool. Although, yes, he is the Mystic Negro. Like, yeah. literally, the Mystic Negro. But there is a full backstory. They do actually write, like, more about his culture and mm -hmm. his heritage and, you know, what 
like they write about the tribes that worship him as gods and what their day to day hmm. life is. So that's a good thing. And ironically, I only saw one major well done representation of other of the non represented things. And you know what that was? Hmm. The book of erotic fantasies for uh, 3.5. I did not even know that book existed, but uh, really? Hang on, let me get on my Amazon store right now. I'm gonna. Don't. <laughs> Is it okay. that bad? Well, here's the gig. Um, I was working at a game store when that book came out. Oh, boy. And there was so much pushback. Oh, my God. No, we can't tell. And we don't want to know about role players having to. It's not Christian and uh, satanic panic. And you know what the damn book turned out to be about? Uh, tell me. The reproductive practices and organs of various fantasy creatures. How long does a gelat like how does a gelatinous cube reproduce? How long are elves pregnant for and what are the trimesters actually like? No, I changed my mind. I really do want to read this book now. <laughs> that that content is directly applicable to how I like interacting with these worlds. Like hey. I need to know weird minutiae like that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um truth, it's good information. Yeah. But it's called erotic fantasies, yeah, and there's not nothing erotic. that makes that gives me the sense of erotic fantasy more than going on food runs for my pregnant half elf and half dark <laughs> elf um, significant other because right. if not, she'll stab me in in, in her sleep. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so uh, something that you know, just as a as a side note on that subject, that has always amused me. So uh, in D&D, you've got you know, your various races, your elves, your humans, mm -hmm. your dwarves, and all that. You've got half-elves, which from a, from a uh, genetic standpoint means that elves and humans are close enough to create a hybrid race. Correct. Um, you've got half-orcs, which means that humans and orcs are genetically close enough to create a hybrid race. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of like half-dwarves you ever hear about. Not a lot <laughs> of uh, half-gnomes or, for that matter, any hybrids between any races but human and one of these others, which tells me that the common ancestor between dwarves and humans is further removed than humans and orcs. Yeah. And that, you know, you have these splinter races that are so genetically different that their biology is fundamentally different <laughs> than a certain, you know, than some of the others. But for whatever reason, orcs, humans, and elves are very closely related, much more so than I think any of them would be comfortable admitting. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but here is the my personal punchline to the whole book of erotic fantasy drama yeah. was that the book that no one said boo to, at least in three point five and third edition, um, that was actually aptly named was the book of vile darkness. Uh if you've ever if you guys have a chance to check out the book of vile darkness from three um from Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 <coughs> oh my god it is so substantial like is it both vile and also dark it yes it oh. it backs up like the satanic panic it, this is a terrible terribly dark book where it's like okay how many orphans do you have to kill to get their feces to do this kind of spell? That's the kind of stuff that's in the Book of Damn. Vile Darkness. And nobody okay. said boo. Nobody said boo to the nobody, Book of nobody Vile Darkness. Nobody knew. But uh, the Book of Erotic Fantasy, oh no, call the preacher man. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that gelatinous cube sex is going to be, uh, that, that's what's going to ruin kids. Hey, uh, man. You know, that, that's going to. It's hot and squishy. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Hard pass. Hard <laughs> pass. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, what, what is it? Uh, your mama's so fat that she couldn't even fit No, no, cube? no. No, your mama jokes. No, oh. your mama jokes. You know, because let's face it, nothing gets better than the the two main your mama jokes, which is your mama's so fat it takes two trains and a bus to get on her good side. Oh. And your mama's teeth are so messed up when she smiles, it looks like she got a mouthful of dice. Anything beyond that. <laughs> That was pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard, uh, uh, heard a good one lately, which was, uh, uh, your mama's so fat, Thanos had to snap twice. Oh, damn. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Or Thanos should have had to clap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whatever it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, but yeah, any, anything beyond that, though. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, let us know what you guys, what you guys had to, um, you know, let us know what you guys are talking about in the comments, but I've got a serious announcement. Um, 
as some of you guys that have been tuning in all week know, um, I've been trying to do a little stuff on the Twitchy Twitch. Ooh. And um, yeah, on the, on the Twitchy. Um, so this this is a big thing. So I would like, you know, I'm making the announcement that probably sometime after San Diego Comic-Con, um, we're going to start live streaming um, a game once a month. Ooh, yeah, one day I'm a month. Um, well, unfortunately, you're not invited no, I, to this one. Not, um, not necessarily playing, but I would watch it. Oh, if, well, you may be able to, you may not, because it's going to be one Sunday a month. Okay. Like, we're going to be doing this show, and then I'm going to pack up all the gear <laughs> and take it to oh, the studio and live stream the game. Now, I'm thinking in nominee hmm. because I haven't told an angel or demon story for a long time, and the game is really big in Brazil. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. And terribly small here. <laughs> um, Weird. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, again, this is like American culture. So yeah. trying Maybe to get my hair situated. All right, guys. I don't I don't do the show <laughs> with my hair down. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking like sometime after San Diego Comic Con, we're going to be doing that. I'll keep you guys updated. But I want a diverse cast of players. Nice. Um, I am so and we'll talk about this in a week or two. I'm so nervous mm -hmm. because I'm going to have people of color in a game based on Christian mythology. Mm, yeah, that's but a every minefield. person of color has a different interpretation of Christian mythology. Yep, and who oh, howdy. Um, well, so if, if you're uh, if you're looking for a uh, an, an atheist middle class white guy, maybe I can uh, you know jump in on Christian mythology. But. <laughs> you won't have the time. As no, I, I said, it'll be directly after this show on those days. Yeah. So and we'll probably be going. I don't know what time the shows will start. That all depends on how freaking crack um, militaristically I can get across town and set up the studio there. Okay. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. I'm looking to partner up with a couple other um, um, channels um, and have like a different um, guest Skype in as as a player every week, and cool. we'll we'll see how that's going. Um, let me know in the comments, like, let us know what you guys would like to see. Um, cause I'm thinking a nominee, but there might be a better game out there that you guys would suggest. The one I will say is off the table is fifth edition D and D because everyone's doing that. And what about you? You pitched me on the idea of the setting midnight and would you run a D and D game set in that setting and stream it? Cause I would love to see that. You know, I thought about midnight mid Knigget. Yeah. Um, the thing about Mid Knigget is it has one premise, and I don't know if I can get a lot of good role playing out of a lot of characters because mm -hmm. its premise is really simple, which is Lord of the Rings if the Fellowship lost. Yeah, but that's okay. I feel like that, that's, that's got some potential for a good game in it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, seriously, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's it's a really. I'm thinking about it. I mean, it's 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 three point five. So uh, it's D twenty three point. Would you be so. able to um, to to change it over to a fifth edition rule set? I probably could if I spent the time it took me to learn the fifth edition rule mm. set and to get good enough at it to do the translations. That, that's a hurdle. Yep. Yeah, that is a hurdle. That is a, that is most definitely a hurdle. Yeah. And um, nobody likes GURPS, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's uh, like people talking about like, well, you know, I'm, I'm debating my new computer. And that guy in the back's like, Linux, Linux, <laughs> new Linux. No, there's a reason I'm not doing Linux, but you should do Linux. <laughs> Look, Rick Hardslab, we know. <laughs> we know we're not going to do Linux. There's a reason for it. Okay. But it's so much better than boots up so much better. Look, I know we're not doing GURPS. Okay. It's just, <laughs> we're just not. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I like you when you've had enough coffee. It it, it takes a few cups, you but know. you know, one, once I'm and there, no I'm, other time. No, yeah, that, that, I'm kidding, no, no, I'm no, that's fair. I only <laughs> like me when I've had a few cups of coffee, so, and no other time. Oh so. man, so yeah. well, yeah, it looks like Heart Slab would watch Midnight if I ran it, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> um, so yeah, and th I mean that's that's one of the really big things on that. So as far as you know, I have a challenge to the people that are watching which is um, real simple. Write up a person of color actually considering um, all of these things, what culture they're from, what geographic location, 
do you have to draw a map? How much time it actually takes you to do that in relation? Just do it on your own time and send it, um, send it in, um, <clears throat> send it in, send in your write up. And who knows if, you know, we don't have that many subscribers right now, which is kind of cool. That means I won't have to read through a whole <laughs> lot of them. So I can say this now. Yeah. <laughs> I can be like, no, write up your characters and, and, and send stuff in and let me know. And who knows if I see one that just really jumps out, maybe we'll Skype on next week's show. Yeah. And say, hey, what did you think about this? Um, and we'll see like how that comes out because um, we're we're actually it's possible for us to take a Skype client now. Yeah. yeah I'm, so I'm we can that. be like, hey, look, we got the guy on the Skype. And then they go, yeah, hey, we're doing the Skyping thing. Yeah. Um, ooh, yeah. Well, we've got a couple. We've got um, one person going, yeah, I like that. So, yeah. Um, but. I mean, I've, I've already got, um, I think I was mentioning to you earlier. It might have been before the show. But um, the I, I've got a setting that I set all of my D&D games in, um, which has a lot of unexplored area on purpose in the setting um, that would be perfect for adding a lot of uh, a lot of good rich culture and history to other areas of the world right so I would love to engage in this challenge at least to one degree or another ah uh, yeah you can't do it. you're you're part of the show I can't Skype I didn't with... say that you were gonna read mine oh I, I just want to do the homework so because just the homework do it sounds fun yeah so just do it yeah. I'm just saying what am I gonna do like oh that's a really good write-up I think I'll Skype with the guy sitting across the table from me oh man Yay. that'd be great like like cut to me and then just like cut to me like on my phone Skyping over here and that'd be <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's... quality right there everyone that's that's okay the... there is ego <laughs> <laughs> and then there's ego. Hey, you said you liked me after this much coffee. Yeah, yeah, but not enough to call you Kurt Russell. I mean, seriously. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know. But yeah. So I mean, that's and, and again, that's this. These are some of the things we got coming down the pike. Yeah. Um, one well, spe of the, speaking yeah. of Kurt Russell, I was, I was going to say, you know, one of the amusing role playing stories from my past was a guy who played a character named Kurt Russell, and he uh, decided he was only going to communicate in Kurt Russell quotes. So he had printouts of Kurt Russell quotes, just terrible one liners from all the Kurt Russell movies he could come up with. And every time he would interact with someone, he would just like re uh, reference the sheet. He had it like broken up between what types of conversations he was <laughs> having, and. We, were, we kept trying to trip him up. We kept trying to find a thing he couldn't respond to with a Kurt Russell quote, and uh, we didn't. We never actually tripped him up. Wow. Yeah. So Just, in case wow. you were wondering, there's a lot of very uh, effective Kurt Russell quotes you could base your entire character on if you want a weird one-dimensional Kurt Russell character. You know, I would only do that based on James Brown screams or Nicolas Cage temper tantrums, <laughs> you know, which would be awesome if I were just, no, hey, we're playing a White Wolf game. Damn it, let me get my running shoes. Good. Hey, welcome to the LARP today. I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! Oh yeah, that's Solar in the back. Yep. That's just yep. That's just what he's doing. Um having a freak out. But yeah, yeah, that that's of course, of course. <laughs> so, um Yeah, so what I'm gonna say is um oh, forgot to tell you guys, one of the things I want to talk about was the GoFundMe page. Um I'm sure you guys are noticing how when I switch back and forth between Doug and myself, <laughs> there's a little moment of pause. Yep. Um, we're saving up for a switcher, and um, there's a link down there um, before the arguing section <laughs> um, to the GoFundMe. Um, we're at $400 now. We're trying to get to about 1500 to fund the website and to buy the switcher, because mm -hmm. the switcher itself is $1,000. And I added a link to the switcher so y'all can see what we're buying <laughs> and how much it costs because I believe in full disclosure. How we okay. are spending your money. Uh, no, just how we're spending the money that you choose to donate to us because once they give it up, it's ours. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you how lose. We're spending my money. <laughs> no, how we're spending back in the deck's money there on making back in the deck better. I wish it were my money. I swear, you know, with the four hundred that we were at right now, I could think of quite a few things I would buy, like a brick of the new Hero Clicks, which is coming out mm. based on Batman the Animated Series. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. Yes. Next week is Bat um, Btas um, Hero Clicks, so you're you're coming in. Oh cause... yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you I saw you like kind of salivating over the Deadpool and X Force set last week. It's true. It, it did look pretty good. And, and uh, if you if you give me uh, give me some time to get my mitts on them to repaint them, I'd love <laughs> to have a uh, you know like a a, a well painted 
um, you know, Deadpool and the uh, and the X Force. I'll place. send you a link. It's sixteen dollars for that set, dude. Oh, all right, that's I'll, sixteen dollars for all six of them. Grab it, repaint it yourself, and come hit me up. All right, um, all right but next that. week, Batman the Animated Series. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a fun table talk. Um, or God, I, I don't know what show we'll be featuring that on next week. Probably coffee and conversations. Cause a yeah, good one. yeah, pro- probably because, um, Sable might be into all that. Cause I swear my new guy, yeah, he loves Marvel and Batman. Well, and, there's, you know, you, you've talked about this, how you dislike Marvel because it's so street level, but Batman is the closest to a good street level that you get out of a lot of... See, let only, me, only because he doesn't have superpowers, well, mind you. let me clear something up, and I'm sorry, money is a superpower. Oh, I agree. Ask anybody with it. No, I'm and, making and, this very clear. Yeah. It's not that I dislike Marvel. I do not enjoy Marvel's street level. That's right. Okay, I enjoy DC Street Level better than I like Marvel Street Level, but man, do I mess with some Marvel Cosmic. I <laughs> yes. love their outer space stuff. Yeah. You know, um, and I like it more than I like DC's outer space stuff, mm-hmm. but I like DC's magic stuff better than I like Marvel's magic stuff. So Makes it sense. all comes down to they're equal because I follow writers, not companies. Yep. So. And, and you can write a great story in either setting. It just depends on... You know what you're trying to do and right great news some people like some stuff other people like other stuff and if you write a whole bunch of stuff you're gonna have something for everyone <laughs> in both companies you think who knew yeah so yeah um but yeah so just you know um we're actually finally running out of time i say finally but no we're actually running out of oh, time okay. <laughs> so what i am gonna say guys is thank you so much for coming into the show and for putting up with our conversation um where can they get a hold of you mr doug well i am dig duggernaut on twitter it's that's always a uh, a good one um you'll see me on deckers on the book uh i'm around there i mean that's that's mainly it as far as online presence goes okay so all right that's cool and again thank you guys for showing up to this week's edition of the game gallery um we didn't focus on a specific game this week because again that question was big so yeah. um, well we, we focus on role-playing games as a concept and we mainly hit on D because it's so prevalent the, the racial issue in D. yeah it's true it, it had a lot to do with this stuff so i guess we covered D this week yeah. but thank you guys and again camel heart this one was for you Okay, and if you guys want to send us any questions um, that we might turn into a show, and you never know if we're going to turn it into a show, but if it's a good question that makes us go, oh man, we got to talk about that, I tell you, I tell you what, we're going to be talking about that, then feel free to send us, um, and of course, you know, where do you guys send the thing if you decide to make the character? Well, that's easy. You can send us your emails and all that stuff to um wow i'm just having so many problems stand by for technical difficulties oh okay i I see what the why i see what the problems on these are but you can send them to us like our music is just being so irritating but you can send us an email and all that jazz um again this is just being real fun isn't it yeah <laughs> um, hey we're uh, growing pains yeah. growing pains but send us an email at back in the deck at gmail.com you can also as you as some of you guys in the comment section already know follow us on youtube slash bid p that is um youtube slash b-i-d space p follow us on twitter at back in the deck um that's where we do a lot of announcements and we're gonna start doing polls and all that jazz <clears throat> um join the deckers on the book on facebook yeah. that is how to get so like everything that we're doing in the comment section right now uh, live it never ends in deckers in the book and that's one of the things i like about it now if you guys are a lot like us um you can not spend all day watching youtube right um but you want to hang out with us and you want to listen to us and that's fine go over to soundcloud slash bid p that's little b little i little d underscore p and there you will find our archives of all of our shows in audio form that you can download as an mp3 for absolute absolutely free as our gift to you to say hey man thanks and of course follow us on instagram to see what we're preparing for and all that other stuff um and that's instagram slash back in the deck and of course 
you can always um, check out the website at www.backinthedeck.com while it's still free because we're making it a sign up members thing and once that happens it'll be seven dollars a month to get access to all of our content interact with us live and have a special chat that's not seen on the youtubes and all that jazz and again this is all fun and games until somebody loses an eye but um check out um our gofundme page and and again um share all of this stuff with your friends because the thing about being a nerd of color is we tend to be hidden and clustered in our little groups because we're tired of getting getting screamed down but i'm gonna say that if you are sick and tired of being screamed down and people tell you that you can't like what you like or see what you see because of the color of your skin um content of your character mostly and um race religion creed sexual identification gender identification whether or not you can walk or again if people underestimate you because of the circumstances of your birth you just tell them to take all those cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic source we're saying thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you guys next week on game gallery